And welcome back. It's time now for our nature segment. And we have a new face, one that you have seen periodically in the background behind Dan. Uh, this is Marie Walton. She is the new naturalist out at the Johnny Appleseed Metro Parks system. So first of all, thanks for being here today. Oh, it's, thanks for it's more me. fun to look at you than Dan. <laughs> now we're going to be talking about migration today, I understand. Yeah, so the days are getting shorter and colder and the nights are getting longer and also colder. And that means the animals are starting to prepare for winter. So they're doing what they need to do. Some animals are laying eggs and hopes that those eggs are going to make it to winter or to spring like grasshoppers. Some animals are fattening up for hibernation like groundhogs and other animals are beginning to migrate to their summer homes in the south. Now we're talking about migration. What animals are migrating this time of year? Oh, we have a lot of different animals actually. So birds are migrating famously right now. Um, through Allen County, we've got waterfowl like geese and ducks. If you look up to the skies, you can see them going through. It's also a good time for fall warblers. They're not as bright as they are in the spring. They're coming in their fall plumage, but they're still just as lovely, more distinguished. We've also got bats that migrate, the big brown bat migrates. Dragonflies migrate, and butterflies are also migrating right now. Oh, no. I love butterflies. So let's talk a about butterflies. Okay, well right now through Allen County, the monarch butterfly is migrating, doing its famous annual migration um, through through Canada and North America down to the oil fir forests of Mexico. And it's really amazing that that entire eastern population just sort of funnels down to that one uh, special forest in Mexico. And they're able to do this in a variety of ways. So they use the sun's position in the sky to orient themselves like they know, oh, it's morning time. They have a really good internal clock and the sun is in the east. They know which way to travel based on that. They use the Earth's magnetic field like a compass. They also uh, use visual clues, so they know if they see a mountain range below them, they should go south, and that helps them all kind of end up funneled down to the same location. And then a monarch butterfly raised here in Allen County locally in somebody's garden on their milkweed or in a local prairie, it will travel 2,100 miles to get to that special forest and they travel about 50 to 100 miles per day, so it'll take them about a month to get there. One record-breaking individual that was tracked by scientists went 265 miles in one day. Wow. So some of them are overachieving. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty amazing that such a uh, small little thing is a butterfly, and you wouldn't think that it has a whole lot of knowledge, has all this information and natural ability. Yeah, it is really amazing. And they have, this is the fourth generation that's born in the summer, and they have special adaptations. So the ones that you were raising throughout the summer, maybe that you've seen, are a little different. This one is the fourth generation butterfly. It has the drive, the behavioral adaptation to go south, and it has really strong musculature in the wings that allows it to be able to make that long journey. So the monarch butterfly has some of the strongest wings of any butterfly, and it's the only one known to fly through the rain. So they're very determined. Yes, they are. I mean, that's pretty amazing. I don't even like to drive in the rain, let alone fly in the rain. <laughs> Me either. So Mexico, what else comes out of Mexico? What else comes out of Mexico? Is, is there anything else that comes out of Mexico as far as migration, or this is it? Uh, they go there, and then what they do is they kind of huddle together in the trees, um, and that causes them to get a little layer of insulation. Um, the trees also insulate them, those special oil fir trees. And then the mountain range that that's in provides another layer of insulation. And that is really important for them because their temperature can't drop below 40 degrees or that would be really bad. And they're not supposed to get wet either because that would allow them to freeze if it got too cold. So the layers of insulation and then Mexico's really dry in the winter time. So that makes the perfect environment where they won't freeze, they're insulated, they can lower their metabolism to slow down and just rest through the winter. And then they'll be able to come back and see us again in the spring. Everything you ever wanted to know about a <laughs> butterfly and more, more importantly, the monarch butterfly. And that's it for our nature segment. And we're back with more right after this.